guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here for another one of our mass making sessions. And today what I thought we could do is mass make some of these gorgeous little um, envelope pockets. So I'm sure these have been done before. I don't, you know, I don't recall seeing them. So I haven't got anybody to reference, I'm afraid. Um, but, you know, I'm not in any way kind of trying to claim them as my idea or anything like that. But what you're going to need, if you want to do some of these, is you're going to need some of these tall envelopes. Now, over here in the UK, we call these DL size envelopes. Um, I mean, to me, they're just kind of the standard size, you know, what you get your letters in. Um, but I don't know, obviously, what their name would be kind of in the US or anything. Um, they maybe would maybe be legal size envelopes I don't know I'm afraid um but that's what I'm going to take now you can either use kind of some that you've had in the post um you know uh that you've opened because you could just seal them down the side with you know just with some glue or stitch in I'm going to use these new ones because you know I can buy kind of a packet of I think it's a packet of 50 for like a pound um you know and I really like this brown color which most of our envelopes that come through the post tend to be the white ones. Um, so yeah, up to you kind of how you want to do it. And then you might need some papers and things to decorate, you know, portions of the envelope. So I've got a whole bunch of different papers. I've got book pages and printer pages and all sorts of things. Um, you're going to need your glue and you're going to need some scissors. Um, and then you probably... Well, you might need a bone folder. If you haven't got a bone folder, that's fine. You can use obviously your scissor handle. Um, and you might need something to just kind of spread your glue out. I just tend to use, um, you know, my old, um, my old reward card and things like that. So anything like that, really. Um, and I think that's kind of it, really. I mean, obviously me being me, I've got a ton of stuff all over my desk that I can just reach for if I want to decorate some of these. Um, but, you know, really kind of up to you what things that you bring along, really. So let's get making. Um, they're super simple. As you know, I never do anything difficult. I like to have nice, handy, simple projects. So let's just take our envelope. And all I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to seal the envelope closed. So again, if you're using, you know, um, recycled envelopes you would just take your edge that you've opened and just seal it closed with your glue um, you know like I say I mean you probably could sew these I don't know really whether you would sew them at this stage I can't <laughs> yeah I'm well I guess you maybe would I'm not sure um, but for me I'm just going to kind of glue this flap down so now all I've got is basically my, you know, my envelope just literally folded shut. And then all I'm going to do is take my flap up and I'm going to take it quite high, but not quite to the top. So kind of just with about, oh, I don't know, a little bit anyway showing. So hopefully you can kind of see that. And then all I'm going to do is fold that up. Again, this is where, you know, you might want to squash it down with your bone folder or your scissor handles. And then you're just going to fold your flap back over here, kind of on itself like that. Now I'm taking my flap pretty much down to the bottom. So I'll just foam fold it that squashed like that. So pretty much down to the bottom. I mean, as you know, I don't measure. So my only kind of <laughs> gauge really is that it's quite near the bottom. But it should give you a little strip down here, which is, I guess, how you see that there's a little pocket in there. And then all you're going to do is seal it shut along this section here and this section here with your glue or of course you could stitch it on the sewing machine and that would kind of seal it shut. Now I'm going to then cut my top part of my envelope open. So if you're doing it on the sewing machine, you're not going to want to stitch this top piece because we're going to slit it open. And then, so if I just glue this closed to show you so we glue down there and then across the bottom okie dokie and I will just press that down like that okay and then you're going to then be able to cut across the top piece here just literally snipping in like that which then gives you that top pocket as well 
So effectively now what you've got is you've got a top pocket here, you've got this pocket here, and then you've got another little tuck here. So you've got kind of three pockets. And of course, once you glued it down onto the page, you could also glue it down on just three sides. So you could technically have your top pocket here. You could have a side pocket here, a pocket here, and this pocket here. So you've got tons and tons of storage space there for lots of little tags and journaling cards and things like that. So that's the basic piece. Of course, I'm going to kind of try and decorate some of them up so they're not just plain envelopes, but I just wanted to kind of show you the basic, you know, the basic envelope first. So let's do another one. And this time we'll kind of layer up a couple of papers into the, you know, or onto the um, uh, envelope. So again, just sealing my envelope closed, just with some glue there. Okie dokie. Now, if I'm going to be sealing mine closed, what I like to do is, well, I was going to say, I like to try and have my, you know, flap type part at the back like that. But I guess, to be honest, it probably doesn't really matter which way round you have it. Yeah, no, actually, I think it does. So again, just taking that up about here. And that's all I'm going to do for this phase like that because that then gives me my rough guide here for where I want to put my patterned paper. So I'm just going to grab in just some of my paper here. Again, you know, I'm really trying not to kind of overthink this too, too much. So I'm just going to take this paper here. Now I'm going to fold this down as my kind of guide here, like that. So I know where I want to. I will just tear it because, because I'm a bit lazy like that. Um, so I've just torn that across there. And then I can just decide, do I want kind of that side with the orangey flowers or do I want kind of the side with more of the greens? Um, Oh, I'll go with the side with more of the orangey flowers. I'm just going to get rid of that little bit that didn't, didn't quite tear off. So again, I'm just going to kind of tear that down. To me, this is just so much quicker and easier than using a paper trimmer. Um, I know lots of people do comment and say, oh, you know, how can you not use a paper trimmer? Honestly, you should see me use a paper trimmer. I just literally am terrible. I find them very big and cumbersome and I'm like all over the place. I'm literally hopeless with them so if I use a paper trimmer there's no way a piece of paper was you know coming out straight <laughs> from the paper trimmer so yeah I kind of avoid it as much as I can well I don't even have a paper trimmer anymore actually um because it was so big under my desk I actually got rid of it so um yeah I don't have a paper trimmer anymore right there we go so this then is going to be obviously my back piece like that, just spread my glue out. Okie dokie. And then this is going to be my piece that folds. So I'm just going to raise my camera slightly. I kind of zoomed it in because I thought that would be better that you'd be able to see loads, but actually I'm not sure whether it's actually now, you know, too far down that you probably can't see anything. Um, so here I fold this flap over, the one with the the folded flap if you see what I mean because to me that's kind of the best way to hide all those you know these unsightly sort of folds and things like that so just going to take that in like that and then obviously you can just decorate up as you want so I could use some more of this patterned paper if I want to or of course we could use some book page so I did bring some of the book page along take some of that and again up to you really I mean I could have the book page under here or of course I could have the book page you know in here in the triangle so I might just do that so I think what I'll do in the first instance is I'm just going to trim this round because this book page has got a little bit of a border which is great because that actually is just mimicking my triangle shape so like that, 
Okie dokie. And then just going to go in there. And then again, I mean, completely up to you how you do this. So what I might do is actually glue it down here and then kind of trim it off afterwards. So, and you know, I don't know about you guys, but I don't always do things the same way. So, you know, just because today this feels like this is the easiest way to do it. I could do it tomorrow and do it, you know, a completely different way. So it's just about finding the easiest way for you. And like I say, I mean, sometimes I just think what's great one day isn't necessarily great the next. So here, you can either fold this over and that will give you that really neat folded edge. So if I just cut this down here. So if I kind of fold this over here, and obviously I need to now trim this down. So again, just kind of go in there like that. And like that. Okay, and then we've got that really lovely kind of neat folded edge. I hope that kind of makes sense. Or of course you could cut it along here. So again, you know, I don't really have a preference. I think either are really nice and I think either have their, their places, you know. Sometimes I like really neat kind of edges and sometimes I prefer them, you know, maybe more jaggedy and torn. So you might find, you know, you're the same and that you'd like kind of a mixture of the different types. So that's that one. Super, super, super neat like that. And then again, just going to run my glue here. Oops, down there. And then my glue here along the bottom like that okay and just press that down like that okie dokie press that down and then again i'm just going to take my top of my envelope here and i'm just going to snip across there to just open the envelope up at the top I mean, obviously my glue's not dry, so, um, you know, it's kind of wanting to flap open a little bit, but hopefully you can kind of see the, the concept there. And like I say, you could definitely, without a doubt, you could just stitch here and then across the bottom and up this edge. And that would actually probably be quicker than, than gluing, to be honest. I mean, I'm only kind of gluing here. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm gluing here, obviously, because, you know, I don't want to have them all the same anyway, but... I'm gluing here for purposes, you know, not everybody has a sewing machine or not everybody wants to, you know, put their sewing machine to paper. But yeah, it would definitely be a very, very quick way to do it is seal it up with the sewing machine. So, and perhaps we'll take a couple to the sewing machine, you know, in a minute. So I'll just do that. So I'll do one more just to kind of show you, like I say, you know, of course they're not rocket science, you know, I never do anything that's too horrible or complicated because, oh, who wants to be doing with that, to be honest? Um, but I will just go over it because I've, you know, perhaps got a bit, a bit confusing there when we were just gluing the paper on and things. So that's my basic envelope there folded down. And then again, we're going to take our flap up here, you know, just seriously. I mean, you're just leaving maybe like a centimeter or so at the top, you know, don't kind of worry too much if it's not quite right it will just mean that your triangle is going to be slightly different, you know, either bigger or smaller. So, you know, please don't kind of get too worried how it is. So again, let me just bring in some pretty paper to put in the background. So let's just see what I've got here. I did bring a whole selection. So, okay. So this is from my vintage Victorian ads. And I thought actually some of this would look quite nice. So let's just take that down there. So again, I'm just going to tear that down there. Okay. And we'll just go in here like that. Okay. Oops. And I mean, the good thing is, it doesn't even matter how straight most of your papers are because a lot of these are actually then, you know, glued in, hidden hidden behind pieces. So, you know, you don't even have to worry about that, which is even better. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so I'm just going to then fold mine up there. I mean, to me, this is just kind of the easiest way to measure it because it's placed on top of my envelope and I'm just literally folding it in, you know, alongside the envelope. So to me, that just, you know, really just super simple, you know, quickest way to do it. So again, just tearing down my edge, you know, and I wouldn't really worry too much if I ended up tearing a little snip out it doesn't matter because by the time you ink it up, you decorate it up, you put some lace on and things like that, you know, you're just not going to even notice that. In fact, it will look kind of part of the effect that you were going for. So, you know, don't worry at all when you're putting your bits on. Okay, so again, just going to kind of stick that on to there. Like that. Okie dokie. And then we just fold our piece up here, like that. And then again, take it on the side with the, you know, the envelope flap type piece. Fold that down, like that, sort of level with the bottom. Squish that down like that. Okay, take my bone folder. So perhaps this time we'll do one without folding the paper over. So again, I'm just going to use that book page. And again, the easiest way to do it, because I've got kind of a right angle here, is just to cut my paper off like that. So that I've got a squared off edge. So again, just go up here like that. Okay. And then I'm going to just bring it in here like that. And then I can just then run that down, she says. I can't really see that much because that, <laughs> that camera is actually like right to kind of a eye level, which, yeah, didn't really plan that very well. But, <laughs> oh my goodness. And I'm all fingers and thumbs. So, um, yeah, again. Okay, and then I'm just going to tear that down there. Like that. Okay, so, I mean, obviously, as you can see, I've got a little bit of trimming left to do, but that's fine. So I can just go back in this side and just trim that down like that. Okie dokie, so that looks pretty, pretty good. Might just have to just trim it down slightly more. Okay, and then just, again, glue that down. Like that. Okay, and down like that. So, I mean, as I said, I don't really have a preference. You know, I think they're just as nice whether they're folded over here for that really super neat edge or here. I think both look really nice. And I just think it's nice to have a variety of different ones. So, you know, just play around and, um, you know, decide which ones that you like best. So again, just going to run my glue up the edge like that. And then here at the bottom like that. And we just press that down like that. And up that edge. Okie dokie. Squish that down. So, I mean, this is where, you know, the sewing machine would actually be quicker because it would just be then instantly stitched and, you know, held together. And then, of course, you can just snip across the top to make your little opening pocket at the top there. Like that. So, again, that's not really kind of stuck yet, but, yeah. So they're really cute pockets, aren't they? And, you know, you can adjust them. You could probably um, fold this flap up less if you wanted or, you know, however you like, kind of adjust them how, you know, how you fancy. Um, but I think they're really quite sweet, to be honest. So I'm just going to be quiet now about what we're doing and just kind of get on and make a few. I probably won't take them across to the sewing machine. Well, actually, what I might do is just bulk... Um, you know, bulk stick the papers on and then take a bulk load to the sewing machine, actually. I think that might be quite a good idea. 
So yeah, I'm just going to kind of do the prep work and then take some across to the sewing machine, you know, in a few minutes once I've done a few. So, but I will be quiet kind of about the process that we're doing and we can just relax now and, you know, have a chat, have a catch up and um, yeah, hopefully have a nice time. So I hope everyone's doing well. I know it's obviously again, only early this week, but I hope your week has started off okay. I apologise straight away for um, for my plaster on my finger. Yeah, I, well, I must have burnt my finger. I can only assume it was on my hot glue gun because I can't think really, you know, what else I've burnt it on. And um, the weirdest thing is, I don't actually recall burning it, which is really bizarre. And the reason it's so bizarre is because it's actually kind of obviously continued, <laughs> continued burning my skin for days. So I think I, it started about Tuesday, I think. And, um, oh, I'm terrible. You know, I'm one of those people who, you know, puts off going to the doctors or sorting things out or, you know, I just can't ever be bothered, to be honest. And I always just think, oh, it's fine, it will go. Well, of course, in this particular instance, it wasn't going. And um, it was just getting worse and worse. So by, I think it was like by Saturday or even by Friday, it was really quite, you know, quite bad and very, very sore. Um, and what had started as, you know, pretty tiny burn actually had become pretty huge. So, um, yeah, that's why I've got a plaster on there. I, in the end, I went into the pharmacy and, um, you know, just asked the pharmacist what he thought. So he recommended putting some, you know, run it under the cold water for a while because, you know, he said I needed to stop the burning which is why I think it must have just continued to burn. Um, and then suggested putting some Vaseline on it, you know, for the evening kind of thing. This was on Saturday evening because it still took me <laughs> that long to bother to actually go and see the pharmacist. Um, so this was on Saturday evening. So I did that and then I slept with, he said, put more Vaseline on it and a plaster over it for the night so I did and then kind of bathe it in some salt water some salt water on Sunday you know when I woke up so I did that um it's it's looking a little bit better than it was to be honest um although this morning I thought it was still not looking great to be <laughs> to be honest so hence the plaster because it's now pretty unsightly so I probably have a plaster on there for a few maybe a couple of weeks to be honest I mean not when I'm not doing videos obviously but you know just while I'm doing videos I don't want to um you know just be well just really horrible making everyone just have to look at something quite unsightly so um yeah anyway that's kind of that's what's going on with my finger so I do apologize for the plaster but I mean I hope it gets better soon because to be honest it's pretty sore and um, obviously, it's, you know, now my hands are obviously kind of quite important that they're functioning fine. <laughs> and, uh, you know, hopefully not looking too unsightly or anything, obviously, on, on the videos. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame that it's on my hand. But anyway, it could be worse. So, you know, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not complaining, but yeah anyway so that's what that plaster is about so I do apologize if it's kind of you know a bit unsightly but I promise you it's much better than um no plaster at the moment which would be really not great not pleasant at all so um yeah anyway so that's oh gosh sorry that's my um it's my excitement is my burn on my finger and the weirdest thing is you know and I did say to the pharmacist because he said you know when did you do it and I said well that's the really strange thing because I mean it actually looked really really bad obviously by Saturday when I actually called in to the pharmacy and um I said well that's the really strange thing is I actually don't recall burning it to be honest I can only assume it was my hot glue gum because that would seem the most likely thing um but you would have thought that I would have you know, remembered a bit, wouldn't you, doing it? But instead, it's yeah, I've got no memory of it. 
so um right i'm going to put them just on the floor behind me the ones that i'm going to be stitching on the sewing machine so this obviously being one of them i'm just going to snip the top off like that so i'll just kind of collect a bunch of them behind me ready to go to the sewing machine yeah so um that's what's quite strange is you know not remembering at all doing it i might do these a bit assembly line style actually for perhaps we'll do three like this shall we um yeah anyway it probably was my hot glue gun to be honest but i mean it's a bit of a strange place to be honest you would have thought it would be you know my thumb or something wouldn't you but anyway who knows but hopefully it's going to begin to get better because it just was kind of like getting bigger and bigger I assume that was kind of where it just was continuing to burn, which, I mean, I didn't really know that it would do things like that. So, so yeah. And then we were forecast to have snow. We were forecast to have snow yesterday. Um, for me, yesterday is Sunday. So, because I'm just filming this on the Monday, ready for putting it up on the Tuesday. Um, yeah, we were forecast to have snow yesterday, like on Sunday, and actually forecast, I think, you know, quite a reasonable amount. Well, we didn't really get any. Where we are, we were very fortunate and didn't get any. I mean, we're right on the south of England, and um, to be honest, we kind of avoid a lot of the weather. You know, we're very fortunate in that we, in that we avoid a lot of the weather. Um, of course, the, you know, the children were disappointed, but say I wasn't overly disappointed but um yeah then we were then forecast snow for today and we've had a little bit of a dusting of snow this morning not a great deal obviously my daughter's very excited even at just the tiny amount that has landed I mean you would have thought it was kind of you know <laughs> the arctic how excited she felt but yeah I mean if you actually looked out you'd kind of you know it's not impressive at all but um yeah she obviously thought it was exciting but actually I've got some um napkin here so I might use the napkin on this one just yeah okay um yeah so that's kind of that's kind of us weather wise I've still been enjoying everybody's everybody's tales of how much snow they've got i know i talked about it on the i think it was on i think it was on my rachel challenge video that i did i don't know why it fascinates me so much to be honest <laughs> you know that the weather's doing all these different things at the same time i just find that whole concept just really really strange and just really kind of weird to get my head around but um yeah loads of you commented how much snow that you've got at the moment oh just like incredible amounts of snow seem to be in so many places at the minute so um yeah i don't know whether i'm envious or not to be honest i possibly feel a bit envious from a you know looking out the window at it point of view because it's so pretty isn't it looking out at snow but actually going out and about sort of trying to function in it is just not really much fun, is it? So, um, yeah, to be honest, probably not really that envious, probably thinking, oh, what a nightmare. So I hope you're all really staying cosy and warm and, <laughs> you know, hunkered down kind of with some nice hot soup and things like that. And, um, yeah, avoiding, avoiding having to go out in it. I mean, of course, there are times when you've got no choice, you know, and you have to go out. But oh, everyone, hope you drive carefully and, you know, be safe because um, it's not easy getting about in snow. Okie dokie. Sorry, I just suddenly realised I didn't say why I always fold this, this side in with the fold. But let me just quickly demonstrate. So if I take this side... Can you see what happens here? I've just got that little flap of the envelope. Of course I could glue that down, you know, that's fine. But I just find if you go with the, the side with the fold, you don't have to worry about it at all because it's just, you know, it's just down then. 
So yeah, I suddenly remembered and thought, I don't think I mentioned why I, why I said to do that. Now, just thinking perhaps we'll mix this with some book page. So yeah, I think that would be quite nice. So again, I'm just going to cut this like here. Like that. Yeah, anyway, so it's pretty cold today, pretty cold, but not as cold as obviously lots of you have got it at the moment. So, um, yeah. Okie dokie. I'm still watching, still watching How to Get Away with Murder with my middle son. Um, Honestly, there's six seasons and I mean, wow, I feel like we've been watching it like for ages, not because it's dragging, um, because we are thoroughly enjoying it still, you know, we're still really enjoying it. And actually to the point where we're going to be so gutted when it finishes because, you know, <laughs> we've now been watching it for so long. Um, but there's six seasons. So I think we are now... I think we're now up to season four. I think we're like season four about episode four or something. I can't remember, to be honest. Um, but so it feels like we've been watching it for a long time because I feel like I've been talking about it for a long time. But of course we have because there are, you know, six seasons and each season has got, I think it's 50 episodes I mean that sounds like a lot even as I'm saying it but yeah I feel like it is 15 episodes which is amazing because I mean quite often a season might only be kind of you know six or seven episodes or you know maybe eight episodes or something like that so for a start this has got a lot of seasons which you know most things maybe don't have quite so many seasons but each season itself has got tons tons of episodes so, yeah, we've been going for ages with it now and, um, oh, we're really enjoying it. It's really, really good. So, yeah. And thank you to all you lovely ladies who've given lots of suggestions for other things to watch because the great thing is, is we now have a whole bunch of other suggestions from you guys of other great things to watch. So, you know, once we finish, we're going to just have all sorts of other things you know, ready, ready to watch really. So that's awesome because, um, oh, it's so boring when you have to keep flicking through the channels, you know, trying to find something. And um, yeah, it's absolutely great to have things lined up. So I've got a few things now in my, you know, it's not called a watch later list, but you know, the, I don't know, watch, watch list maybe it's called. Um, yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff ready, ready and waiting to watch so because I know that lots of people have mentioned um the serpent so we've got that in our watch later list um we've also got the alienist season two because we have watched season one uh so that's in there and what's the other thing a snow piercer several people have mentioned so we've got that in our watch list what else have we got oh can't think now but we've got several things anyway so yeah really great because we've got a whole bunch of things lined up ready to watch so that's awesome but having said that the how to get away from, away with murder I think I'm still going to be watching that this time next week because um you know 15 episodes per season I probably won't won't have finished that by this time next week I mean it is a case of every every time we're watching it we're like oh should we quickly put another one on trying to get my daughter to go to bed like super early and things so that we can be watching it she's uh on the whole not brilliant for going to bed you know as obviously many children aren't um but you know even if she just goes upstairs then at least then we can watch some you know more grown-up tv so that's that's good enough yeah so um we have been really enjoying that. Oh, look at what I've... Oh, no, that's okay. I thought for a minute I'd folded it the wrong way. I think I've just glued it the wrong way. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so we have been really enjoying that still. And what else? 
Well, Saturday, well, we've had a couple of really nice days, actually. Saturday was beautiful and so was Sunday. No, Saturday and Friday, sorry, not Sunday. Saturday and Friday, they were both beautiful days. So, um, yeah, managed to go out for, you know, lovely walk and things like that. Although we did get, we did end up getting wet one of those days. It might have been Friday, I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, it was lovely weather on, I think it was, I think it was Saturday. Honestly, the days just kind of merge into one because, uh, you know, with the lockdown, every day is pretty much kind of the same, isn't it? Okie dokie. Right, I also <laughs> just want to apologise to everyone because um, my Facebook group, I'm really behind again. I just, oh, I can't apologise enough. I'm so sorry. I haven't been on there again for ages now. Um, I still haven't put up February's, uh, you know, challenge. And I still haven't even done my January challenge myself. So I started it yesterday. Oh, I've really struggled to do it. <laughs> it's not going well. So I might film what I have left. I didn't film it, um, you know, when I was making it yesterday. But I might film a little bit of it later today if I get a chance. Um, yeah, I... I just struggled making it for some reason. It it was a really tough challenge. So, um, yeah, anyway, I need to do the film or, you know, the video ready for the February challenge, which, again, I haven't quite compiled the um, criteria for that challenge yet. But hopefully, hopefully I'll get around to that, hopefully later today. And then I will put it up, you know, in the Facebook group. So, yes, I do apologise. I have just I don't know the time's just kind of going and yeah just disorganized disorganized I'm afraid but anyway hopefully I will um get around to doing that within the next you know day or so um yeah so because I haven't really been on my Facebook group which again you know I must just quickly apologize again I no idea kind of how many people joined in the January challenge but if you joined in <laughs> did you struggle like mad did you find it really hard or is that just me I don't know whether it's just me but yeah I found it really hard really really hard so um I mean obviously when I set those challenges you know they are completely you know wide and open to interpretation there's no kind of set fixed you know you must do this or anything like that they're just kind of there for suggestions the you know the words kind of are there as suggestions of things to use and it's very much you know left to your interpretation um you know completely so you can go as kind of wide as as you need to go um you know just kind of to suit how you've interpreted it, I guess, really. But yeah, I found it really, really, really tricky. Well, I mean, so, so tricky, I've not even finished it. So I, um, I've got one or two of the words sorted out for the February one, but I need to kind of look at it again because <laughs> it's all very well said in these challenges, but if they're so difficult that I can't do them, they're, um, that's a bit stupid, isn't it? I need to kind of try and have something that's a little bit more workable. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting to some, to some months without a Y in them. Um, yeah, it would be good to have no Y, maybe like June. Uh, what were the other letters? Well, R is a little bit tricky, I find, as well, to be honest. So, yeah, I've kind of... <laughs> Kind of struggled with that and just wondered how how you guys if you've joined in how have you found the challenge did you find it tough and honestly it's not through disinterest why I haven't been on the Facebook group I just honestly I just haven't really um you know had the chance so 
definitely, definitely, I will get round to it. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to getting round to it. So, honestly, I mean, you're all so amazingly clever. When I go on and I just, you know, browse through all them lovely photographs and things for all your projects, oh, just amazing, amazing, amazing projects. So, yeah, I love it when I do go on there. You know, just full of kind of amazing inspirational ideas, to be honest. I was talking to my sister at the weekend and, um, I mean, she's not a crafter. She's kind of, she got into like resin art last year and I was so excited because she was really hooked and just really, really loved it. And I thought, oh, this is awesome. She's become a crafter. Anyway, she then ended up having a bit of allergic reaction, bit of an allergic reaction to the resin, um, which I think can happen. I think perhaps that's quite common, to be honest. And um, anyway, so it kind of put her off and she stopped doing it, which, you know, that's really a shame because she was absolutely loving doing it. And um, I said to her, well, you know, why don't you do some journaling? You know, make, make a junk journal. And she said, oh, I just wouldn't even know where to start. So I'm just toying with kind of doing a total, total, total beginners um, series. I mean, it's hard to know because, I mean, I know obviously most of the people who are watching, you have made journals and things. And, you know, it's just hard to know then where you would gauge or, you know, where would, where would you kind of pitch the series? I don't want to kind of, you know, treat people like idiots. But then... You know, my sister is kind of at the stage where, I mean, she literally, you know, she's not really seen a junk journal, particularly in the flesh or anything. So, you know, but then is that because actually she wouldn't really want to see one? You know, she, she's not really interested. So I'm just kind of toying with the idea of doing a complete and utter, um, you know, beginner's guide sort of thing. Um, yeah, I might do. I'm not sure. Right, okay, I'm going to take these ones across to the sewing machine and then I'll come back. Hold on. Okay, so I am back from the sewing machine and this is how I've done them. So I've literally, just as we talked about, just stitched around on the three edges like that. So I've got my top pocket here, I've got my little pocket there and then I've just got a lo another little sort of pocket tuck there. So yeah, they were much quicker doing them on the sewing machine. So, you know, if you've got a sewing machine, obviously then, you know, you might prefer to do them like that just from a speed point of view. So that's the four that I did on the sewing machine. And then, of course, I've got the couple that we did and we glued. I've also got the first one that I did and glued, but I hadn't added any decorative papers or anything to that one. So let's decorate one up. Um, let's just have a look. Oh, I don't know. Maybe this one or this one, I think they're both really really nice and whilst I got up at the sewing machine I just dragged out a couple of my um, little clusters here and these are my little tea bag clusters um, that I did that were inspired by um, Leaf Kitty her name is so yeah these are those absolutely love how these look they're just absolutely gorgeous let's just pick one let's see oh, that's quite a good one or actually that one Ooh, let's have a look right and I've picked these clusters because these are actually quite small which um yeah I struggle to make smaller things and as you know <laughs> mainly kind of make huge ginormous things so yeah it was kind of oh these are these are a good size actually I think I'm going to use this one on that or on that I think on the napkin the napkin one so that looks just gorgeous doesn't it I mean to be honest it looks just gorgeous even just how it is with nothing else on there um but I'm just going to obviously ink that up so it's kind of blending in a little bit more so this napkin was decoupaged onto sheet music so I'm just going to ink straight over that and actually what's really nice is using the tea bag um, cluster here. The texture of it's quite similar to the napkin. So it kind of just, you know, really is a good match for the napkin. 
Okay. Oh, I've got to do my food shopping later. Yeah, I should have done it at the weekend, really, but yeah, I just didn't. And um, so I've got to do that later, said my daughter. Oh, does she want to do the food shopping? She was ecstatic. Oh, I love doing the food shopping, she said. Oh, I mean, who loves doing the food shopping? <laughs> what she means, obviously, is she loves going around being able to, you know, ask for all sorts of rubbish to be put in, in the trolley, you know. Oh, can we have this? Can we have that? Can we have you know, the other? So, yeah, she's chuffed to bits about doing the food shopping. Okay. Let's right, put that down there. Okay. So we're still in a lockdown over here. Um, but, you know, obviously that doesn't include going to the supermarket. You're allowed to, to do that. I haven't watched the news, I've got to be honest, for a couple of days. Well, actually, several days. It must be about four days, I think. So, um, yeah, I have no clue where we're at with our um, numbers and things. I hope they're coming down now. You know, I hope everyone watching, I hope you're all staying safe and, you know, your family members are all staying safe and things. And I hope you're all surviving kind of, you know, with the craziness of the situation as well. Because, I mean, staying in is, um, you know, in itself not, not much fun, is it? When, um, you know, even if you're not kind of wanting to be going out doing and I think much the fact that you literally can't go out is you know quite sort of well quite difficult oops sorry just had a lump of glue kind of hanging on my glum, uh, glue gun there so my dad he had his first jab on Saturday um he was just 70 last year so um yeah he's just had his first jab on the Saturday just gone so that's really good news my mum's not been called for hers yet, but, um, you know, hopefully she'll be called quite soon. So, yeah, I think he's kind of quite pleased to have had it done. So, I mean, I kind of would always say he's quite a young 70. You know, he, um, yeah, he he's quite a young 70. So the whole staying in thing for him, that's been, that's been tough. He's not really somebody for staying in he likes to be kind of off out doing things all the time so I think this has been quite hard for him but having said that he you know he too has even got used to it because I mean like we all have you know you've had no choice and it's been going on for such a long time that of course we have all got used to it haven't we but um yeah I think he's pretty chuffed now that he's had his first vaccine I mean, obviously, nothing's really changed until you have your second one. Um, but, you know, I guess it's just a, a bit of peace of mind, isn't it? You know, that you don't feel quite so terrified. So I'm really pleased that he's had his. Okie dokie. I might just even just have a little number up there, to be honest, you know, and that's kind of all that needs. Um, you know, and although it seems like I've not really done much decorating, obviously the main decoration here was the cluster, which of course has already been done. Um, you know, so that just takes all the hard work out of this because, you know, there's nothing you need to do if you've already, you know, got a cluster there. So, um, yeah, just makes it really, really quick and easy to do. Love how this pocket looks, I have to say. It's really, really, really pretty. Really pretty. Okay. Okie dokie. Going to cut that thread off because that's kind of in the way a little bit so there's that one there so they're really cute aren't they and you know like i say i mean if you then just work with a cluster or something 
you know, then, I mean, literally it's decorated and done in just no time whatsoever. So let me see if I've got anything that I can show you that's like a journal page. Uh, hold on. Okay, I have a journal that I haven't quite started yet. I've dug out all the bits for it, but I haven't actually started it yet. So it's in my unfinished projects box ready. So that's quite handy, all ready to go. Um, and that's how it would look on the page. So as I say, I mean, I would kind of glue it on three sides so that when it was stuck on, you'd have like a pocket here. You'd have your top loading pocket oops, here from the envelope. You'd have your pocket here and then you'd have another little tiny tuck spot here. So, you know, lots and lots of things going on with those and just looks gorgeous, doesn't it? So, yeah, I hope that you like them. And um, like I say, not kind of trying to claim them as my idea. You know, I haven't seen them, but I'm sure that probably somebody has done them before. I'm not trying to, you know, suggest that they were my idea or anything like that. But, um, yeah, I hope that you like them and have fun if you decide to make some. They're pretty quick if you're using the sewing machine especially. And, uh, yeah, they're kind of just a nice little different pocket to have in your journal so um thank you so much for watching everybody and i hope you all stay safe and yeah have a great day thanks then bye